Hello, and welcome to your second video in the Methoden module folder or, or whatever video series that we're making right now. This one is called researching your term paper. Uh, when we talk about researching your term paper, we're going to break that down kind of talking about the very general and moving on to the more specific. So we're going to talk about how you can use the course itself to get research, how you can find suitable launch points, the resources that are available to us at our university, and then we're going to talk about specific methods, especially the snowball method of research. Right, so your first starting point will probably be the material that you will be getting throughout term. Uh, there, there'll be the primary literature, there'll be the theory concepts that we talk about, and there will also be secondary literature, so articles by other literary scholars. This should probably be your first entry into your research. This is what will help you find an idea as well, which we talked about in our first video. Yeah, I mean, when you look at... I don't know, say the interpreter, if you're writing a paper about it, if you look at our texts that are also about the interpreter, it's going to give you some ideas and maybe even just inspire you as to which quotes might be worth singling out or what areas might be especially interesting in those those stories. Um, that's one way that we can always begin our research. I would recommend not only having research from the course, though, because that also can sometimes come off as a little bit like you didn't try very hard. However, that's not always the case. We do recommend that you use it as much as you can. Use it liberally because it's given to you for a reason. It's supposed to make your job a little bit easier. Usually when we don't understand a concept, or when we're maybe looking into a concept that's related to the coursework but that wasn't covered in the course, we're going to be looking at Wikipedia or Google, and we're just going to be looking for how we are going to come to understand these terms. When we do something like that, you can obviously not use Encyclopedia Britannica or Wikipedia as sources, but you can always look at the sources they've cited after you've given yourself some broad information, and maybe that will help you to find sources of information that might be suitable. Of course, that's not always the case. Wikipedia is not academic, so it doesn't sort cite academic sources. But don't be afraid to use it if you need a concise explanation for, for a particular concept, just be aware that you can only use it as a starting point for your further research, not as something that you can quote in an academic context. A bit more academically suited than Google or Wikipedia is Google Scholar. You might already be aware of that particular resource, but it's a good idea to, get, to head there and try and look for the... Um, the keywords that, that are part of your idea in Google Scholar that will give you a bit of an overview as to what has been done already and might help you in, in identifying what you can do. Because you're able to search at what has been cited and where the text itself has been cited and search within those two different entries, you can actually find a lot of research that way that might be overlooked or uh, might be actually quite popular that you weren't aware of otherwise. Of course, Google Scholar is not the end-all, be-all of anything, because it has certain biases that are, are well, uh, inescapable, really, when you think of it from a search engine point of view. So while Google Scholar is a helpful resource, it shouldn't be the only one that you're using. Which brings us to some of the more academic resources that we have available to us. There's the university library. You can use the catalog, and I would highly recommend not only looking at the books that we have, in our collection, but also at the essays, the Aufsätze, chapters and, and articles, because you can actually access quite a few via the library catalog. So do that. The ULB catalog is especially interesting because it actually is connected to a lot of different databases as well, especially in the essay section. So if you do search in that, it can sometimes link you to some of the other databases, and it will already have pruned your results very helpfully in the direction that you're looking for. But you will also want to look at the databases themselves, because sometimes the library catalog will only show you the things that it has readily available and sometimes not even all of those. So you want to head to research on the ULB page 
uh, look for databases. The most prominent one is probably MLA. You can use that with, with giving in, with typing in keywords, and that'll give you a selection of articles and book chapters, some of which you can access online, others you can't. Those you can most often uh, reach or access through interlibrary loan. Don't be afraid to use that. It costs a little bit of money, but it can be very worthwhile. There are also some other databases that are very popular that we have access to, be it Muse, JSTOR, or Sage. These are just some other examples, and we're going to provide links in this video to show you all of these different databases, and hopefully you can bookmark them all and make use of them when you write your term papers. Obviously, this video is not all-encompassing, and Tina and I don't know what new database might be on the ULB's website right now, so we recommend checking it out for yourself always evaluating because those databases can change throughout the year. Be aware that if you do search the ULB catalog and the databases, you want to be logged into the university VPN if you're not on the campus anyway. Some of the databases, though, will allow you to log in through an institutional login or open Ath Athens or Shibboleth, and that will be made pretty clear to you once you're on those individual article websites. Those are not your only options. Once you have collected a number of articles and books through the methods that we just explained to you, you can use a thing called the snowball method. The snowball method is pretty simple. See, one of the biggest issues when we research is we don't really know what to research for. But once we have even a small pile of research, we can go to the sites, well, the citations, the sources that they've cited in those papers. When we do that, we can look at them and we can figure out if any of them might be relevant to our topic. Sometimes we can find research that's more relevant to our topic than the actual paper or article that cited it to begin with. When we do that, we kind of consistently move ourselves forward and we keep finding more and more sources because we can go to that source and look at what they used as sources. The biggest problem with the snowball method is that it's kind of based on the year that you're looking at, right? If you're looking at an article written in 2013, it will only have research from before 2013 cited. Nonetheless, this is an extremely useful method and we highly recommend it. It can also be used as a cross-reference to see which sources are the most trustworthy or most relied upon. We can also use this method if we look at handbooks, um, collections of key concepts on a particular uh, corpus of theory, or even when we look at research encyclopedias and so on. Uh, so you might have a look at the key concepts of post-colonial studies, which will give you very short explanations on specific concepts such as binaries or hybridity. And that won't be enough to, uh, to carry you through your entire term paper. But all of these entries have their own work cited list. And we highly recommend looking at that and, and gaining more research, gaining more material through that. I think that about covers the basics of research and what you need to know. It might seem a lot simpler than you expected. That's because it is. The act of researching isn't hard because of how it's done, uh, but rather actually going through the slog of reading all these different articles, many of which you don't really know if they're good or not until after you've read them. One thing that you might want to do is read the abstracts, read the keywords, and have a sort of pre-selection. You don't want to read all the research that you find. You only want to read the stuff that is interesting to you. Sometimes you can read the introduction if it's a, if it's a certain book that you found. Sometimes, as I said, the abstract. So do try and be critical of your research when it comes to content, but also be critical in order to, to find out whether it's an academic source that you can actually quote. So we hope that this video helps you t with your research endeavors. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.